Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 22nd of December 2010. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comment. Before we go on, I'd like to apologize to the subscribers who did not get yesterday's episode of Azeroth Daily. This was due to a YouTube subscription bug. I don't know what caused it, but that episode was uploaded. So if you do want to watch it, I popped an annotation up on the screen right now so you can go all the way back to yesterday's episode if you missed it. Apologies for that, and I would recommend recommend that people keep an eye on my front page that's on the channel youtube.com slash total halibut as well as my facebook my twitter both of which are accessible from the menu at the top of the channel page or indeed my website cynicalbrit.com for updates if for some reason azeroth daily does not appear in your subscription box and with that out of the way what's in the news today so the pvp bug that i was telling you about the exploit a couple of days ago has now been fixed and blizzard are taking active steps to hopefully repair the damage that was done by this particular exploit. So the following things are going to be happening, folks. All existing items requiring 2200 rating will have their minimum level requirement temporarily increased to level 86 to make those items unusable. Now they're going to be changing that back on January the 25th. Basically, they think that no one should have this right now. This rating is far too high, so they are making those items completely unusable until almost the end of next month in a temporary fix to try and hold back the imbalance. Also, weapons which require a 2200 rating will be unavailable for purchase. This limitation is planned to be reverted on January the 25th, and also all players and team ratings for arenas will be reduced to a maximum of 1500. Those of you who are below 1500 won't be affected, and also matchmaking values for all players are going to be reset to 1500. You'll also be getting less conquest points next week by the looks of it because they've reset the so-called best week rating to 1,500, which means that the maximum obtainable conquest points will now be 1,343, which matches up to that 1,500 rating. So yes, indeed, folks, this is why we can't have nice things. So thanks to those who exploited that bug, you've ruined it for everybody else. The latest round of hotfixes has rolled out, and those of you who have tailoring, blacksmithing, leatherworking, or engineering are going to be pretty happy with the fact that they've now fixed chaos orbs. These can now only be rolled on by characters with a minimum skill level of 425 in those professions. Now, you might wonder why exactly this is the case. Well, chaos orbs are different to the orbs that you got in Wrath of the Lich King. These ones are bind on pickup and are required for certain crafting recipes. So, there is no reason for anyone that doesn't have that profession to actually be able able to roll on these things. This is a good change and something that has actually been a long time coming, so I'm glad that they've managed to sort that one out. Also, if you're a Draenei hunter, you're going to be pretty happy because the Draenei buff, the one that gives you 1% hit, can now also apply to your pets. So there you go. If they were missing, then that will give you a little bit of a boost in DPS. Here's one for the Europeans. The Blizzard Europe site has released the community news update, which includes a variety of highlights from various foreign language websites, including Battlecraft, the Italian site, the Serbian site Wow Serbia, as well as the Czech and Slovakian site WowFan.cz, which actually has an article regarding Paragon and the Conclave of the Wind, which I'd recommend you have a look at. Also, Swedish site LevelCap.se has an article about effective value of stamina as a tank. So a lot of cool stuff for our foreign language friends over in Europe there. Also a roundup of some cool weekly comics, including the Gladiators and Looking for Group, as well as a forum watch, which has some interesting stuff, including a PvP guide to Tol Barad, and a beginner's guide to DPSing intelligently. All of those links are available in the description below this video. And with that, it's time for your daily blues. Zahim is on the warpath once again after a particularly dumb post in the Chaos Orb thread from somebody called Grubbins, who is arguing that Chaos Orbs don't replace gear drops. They're an additional thing as an added bonus. So if you think you're a special little snowflake that is the only one entitled to a drop, go ahead and form a group with your guild. I guess I just won't tank or heal randoms with non-crafter characters. What? <laughs> Zahim responds saying that the actual argument is bewildering and he's assuming that the guy is trolling. He says that he doesn't want to go and start pushing buttons that neither of us want to be pushed. I disagree. I think he absolutely wants to be pushing the button and perhaps is already doing so at this very moment. I certainly would. 
a strange flying cat by the name of Nevalistus, who is one of the support forum agents, has compiled a useful post regarding account security. I would recommend that you go and have a read on it. It has links to various things, including the account recovery web form and information on computer security and the authenticator. Go have a read of it, folks, if you are remotely unsure about keeping your account safe against keyloggers. And with that, it's time for your daily grind. This one's a positive one, folks, and I would recommend that you at least do this starting area because of this final quest. It's right at the end of the Echo Isles, and it involves an epic battle involving Vol'jin, as well as a very sad moment at the end. Highly recommended if you haven't rolled a troll, and I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Go give this one a shot at least. It will be worth your time. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature. It's the Court of Lords today, folks, as it is on every Wednesday. And since we did Cho'Gal last week, I'm going to give you a little bit of a primer to the boss after Cho'Gal. Not currently available until Cho'Gal Heroic is beaten. Yes, indeed, it is the mysterious Lady Sinestra. So the rundown is that Lady Sinestra is basically Deathwing's ex and the mother of Nefarian and Anixia. She's also known as Syntharia, if you've heard that name knocking around. So... Notharian went mad, as you know, and became Deathwing, after which he actually attempted to mate with his consorts. Yeah. One of those consorts was Syntharia, and indeed, apparently, all the other consorts died as a result of hot, steamy dragon sex. <laughs> Terrifying, isn't it? Syntharia actually survived it, but with various scars and burn marks. Her goal, which is very similar to what Nefarian was trying to do, and indeed failed with the chromatic dragonflight, is to create a superior dragonflight to rule over all of Azeroth. To kick off this little campaign, she decided about 500 years before the opening of the Dark Portal to try and destroy the Kirin Tor. Now, how she did this was using a curse that prevented them from using magic. Unfortunately for her, and fortunately for everybody else, Alexstrasza's consort Cariolstras was able to foil this particular plot, and after the fact, Syntharia was presumed dead. This wasn't the case, however. Syntharia went into hiding and assumed the guise of Lady Sinestra and continued the work of creating a superior dragonflight. Now, this was happening in-game during the Burning Crusade era after the original incarnations of Nefarian and Anixia were killed by us, repeatedly, for loot. So you might have seen her knocking around in the Shadowmoon Valley. She looked quite similar to Anixia back then, or, in fact, in her Blood Elf guise, which was a Blood Elf in Tier 6 Hunter armor. That's the Gron Stalker. So, while she's in Shadowmoon Valley, she ends up pressuring the Dragonmoor clan, who at that point were evil, unfortunate people, and now are part of the Horde back in the Twilight Highlands, as you can see. And she demanded that they provide her with Netherwing eggs to assist in the creation of the Twilight Dragonflight. She was also seeking the Shards of the Demon Soul, as well as an artifact called Balagos Bane, which was an ancient cube designed to harness and store magical energy that instead ended up killing its creator, Balagos, hence the name. So using these artifacts, she was able to create a powerful twilight dragon named Dargonax. Unfortunately for her, she wasn't able to fully control the creature, and when his powers became unstable, they destroyed him, and as far as everyone else knew, Sinestra as well. However, as with so many antagonists, Sinestra did not die and is now the final unlockable heroic boss in the Bastion of Twilight. Considering the leaked models we've seen so far, it's believed that she's in a half-summoned form, similar to Kill Jaden was in Sunwell Plateau. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. Nathan writes in with this one and says, I have a problem. A couple of days ago, I was doing a random heroic on my hunter. The trinket Tears Grace dropped off Siamat. Well, in the group, there was a rogue as well. He and I needed on the trinket. Nothing wrong about that, you might think. But there is something wrong with the warrior tank, who was the friend of the rogue, also rolling on it. And what ended up happening was the warrior tank won it and then gave it straight to the rogue. I wouldn't really care considering the Trinket Fluid Death can be got for 1,650 Valor Points, but my cap now is 1,250, so I can't get it. I've also had a complaint sent to Blizzard, and they said they would look into it. Well, I got a response back today, and Blizzard said because the loot setting was set to Need Before Greed, they couldn't give him the Trinket and take it away from the Rogue. Do you think I should just say to heck with it and go on with my Hunter and get something else, or should I try to find a way to get Blizzard to give me the Trinket I won? Well, you didn't win it. That's the point. Their, their point was entirely valid. It is need before greed. 
that's based on the person who actually won the role, which in this case was the warrior. And while I'm aware that it's not an ideal trinket for a warrior, it could certainly be used by a DPS warrior. It's not like a warrior rolling on cloth, for instance. Uh, it's not a useless trinket for a DPS warrior, even though the guy was spec tank at the time. Now, again, I absolutely agree with the concept even in pugs of rolling main spec before off spec and yes it's obvious what happened here the guy rolled on it to make sure that his friend had a higher chance of winning it then gave it straight over however what are you suggesting be done here exactly you can't have blizzard arbitrating these kind of things if you're using a need before greed system then it comes down to a simple roll that you either win or lose it's not like the warrior ninja did he could have used it, he rolled on it, he won it, and then chose to give it to his rogue friend. Which, yes, is a little bit underhanded. There's no question about that. But there's nothing you can do within the confines of the system, aside from don't group with randoms. These kind of things are going to happen in pugs all the time. And they do. In fact, it's becoming increasingly problematic for some people who are just joining pugs to join a pug that has a number of friends or guildies in it. And then as a result of that, they end up being ganged upon, kicked out by the guildies or whatever. I, what's the solution to that? Do we prevent people from queuing entirely if they don't have a full group? instead have them just queue solo and hope for the best because that doesn't seem like a particularly good idea in a social environment it's also a pain in the ass for guilds who might simply not have an extra person on at the time there's just there isn't anything you can do uh, the warrior didn't ninja it and indeed ninjaing is such a vague term these days that it doesn't really apply too much anymore within pugs but yeah, it's, it's bad and it sucks, but there isn't anything you can do about it. No, talking to Blizzard further will not help your cause. It was rolled on legitimately. It was won legitimately. What the Warrior did afterwards is none of Blizzard's concern. So I'm afraid you're just going to have to chalk it up to experience, try not to run with randoms as much as possible, and hopefully it will drop again for you. Daniel writes in to ask, Dear Mr. Total Biscuit, first off, sorry because my English isn't perfect. Well, most people's isn't. And they tend to come from countries where it's the native language, so don't worry about it. I'm a fairly new player, and just recently I got to level 85, but I still consider myself a bit of a noob. So I'm confused about PvP gear and PvE gear. This is why. The other day I'm in a battleground, and one of the players starts flaming someone because this person is using PvE gear in a battleground. So this got me thinking, what is the difference between these two kinds of gear? I used to think the only difference was the way that you got them. And now I'm worried I may screw up using PvP gear running heroics or PvE playing battlegrounds. Right, it all comes down to something called item budget and the distribution of stats. So every item is balanced around something called an item budget. It makes sure that no one item is absurdly more powerful than the others, or at least that's the plan. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but hey, you know how it goes. So the best way to explain this is by comparing two fairly similar items. So we're going to have a look at these two that are popped up on the screen right here. The Bloodthirsty Gladiator Silk Cowl, which is a mage headpiece PvP gear. And this one, which is the Crown of Enfeebled Bodies. Now, this one is a heroic piece of PvE gear that is very suitable for a mage. You might notice that the item level is different. That's simply because PvP gear and PvE gear tend to have slightly dissimilar item levels. I wouldn't worry too much about that. So, the best way to look at this is to have a look at the stats. So, you see on the Bloodthirsty Gladiator's Silk Cowl, you've got a lot of stamina. And you've also got a socket bonus with resilience in it. So that's pretty vital. And you've also got a huge amount of the resilience stat on this. The only other stat that you've got on that is intellect and mastery rating. So think about it for a mage. Resilience is the primary difference between PvP and PvE gear. It's the big differentiating factor. Resilience is a damage reduction stat. It's going to reduce damage incoming from any PvP source, whether it be magical damage or physical damage. doesn't really matter. So it's a very important stat to have in order to last longer. It's like armor on crack, basically, but for PvP. Now... You might also notice the way that the other stats are set up. For instance, a lot of mastery rating on this. Mastery for, say, a Frost Mage in PvP is a very important stat. Mastery for a Frost Mage in PvE is not as important. 
So that's a stat that's clearly aimed at PvP there instead of PvE. Now, you might also notice that the PvE one has Critical Strike and Haste instead, as well as a Intellect Socket bonus as opposed to a Resilience Socket bonus. So those are the big differences. They are designed for different things in mind. They can work. You can do, say, Battlegrounds without Resilience, but you will die very, very fast. So it is not advisable, let me put it that way. In the same token, it's not advisable to do PvE with PvP gear either, because resilience is effectively useless. And since it spends an awful lot of the so-called item budget, it means you don't have enough room for other stats, and you can't reforge resilience either. So it's not like you can change it into something more useful for PvE. So those are the primary differences, and hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea which ones you should be going for. Right, folks, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching Azeroth Daily today. I'll be back tomorrow with yet more newsy goodness. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I'll see you next time.